conceptual science system of contemporary fine arts doesn't use as much subjects or stories as they did until the end of the 19th century, giving place to symbols, metaphors, illusions, mythological models and paradigms, which are being rethought with our own experience in mind and then built into new structures with the help of the most advanced technologies. By making fun of snobbish common way of thinking, video sculpture made in ancient Greece combines video stream with ancient form. The sculpture plays with our fundamental perception principles, with the clichés from the inside of our memory, such as uh, ideal proportions of Greek ceramics. In this way, we are reminded that an artwork created with respect of antique harmony principles will likely achieve the favor of the most conservative audience. Alexey Losev, Russian philosopher and philologist specialized in antique mythology, aesthetics and philosophy, has analyzed antique symbols and archetypes which exist within our collective consciousness and are widely used by contemporary artists. Joseph Campbell, American mythologist, writer and lecturer, wrote that the relationship between society and mythology with its symbolics has no pathetic character and is often placed inside paradoxical everyday context of modern life. Modernism does not bring harmony inherent to ideology of ancient civilizations. I would like to instance a couple of examples. The Oracle project created innovatively in 1965 by Billy Kluver and Robert Rauschenberg and the Aphrodite's platform, a project created in 2006. The oracle for ancient Greeks, Romans and nations of the East was a person considered to interface prophetic predictions or precognition of the future, allegedly inspired by the gods and then translated to the asking believers by the priests, as well as a place where such precognition was announced. That's how Billy Kluwe himself describes his project. By creating the oracle, Rauschenberg wanted to pay his homage to New York. He asked me to co-work on this project. He was planning to use closed space to create an interactive environment, where temperature, sound, smell, lights, etc. could be affected by the person who moved through it. Nowadays, Bob's idea about the oracle, originally invented in 1965, could be implemented using neural network chips. Engineers have already wired your house enough to make it react to your everyday actions. It can turn off the lights for you, close your doors, prepare coffee when it comes to programmable coffee makers, and so on. If you do something unusual, for example start roaming at night, system takes your behavior as abnormal and so doesn't start making your morning coffee. However, the level of technologies in the 1960s was not advanced enough to let Bob bring such a project to life. After numerous discussions and several years of working, on the 15th of May 1965, the Oracle installation was opened to public in Leo Castelli Gallery in New York. The Oracle turned to be one of the Rauschenberg's most successful artworks, and now it is exhibited in the center of Georges Pompidou in Paris. The Oracle is a sound environment made up of five AM radios, where the sounds from each radio emanates from one of the five sculptures. The viewer can play the sculpture as an orchestra from the controls on one of the pieces by varying the volume and the rate of scanning through the frequency band, but they can stop the scanning at any given station. The impression was that of walking down the Lower East Side on a summer evening and hearing the radios from open windows of the apartment buildings. All of the material for the sculptures Rauschenberg had found on the streets of New York. In spite of looking pretty simple, the hardware behind each and every one part of the sculpture, as it functions at saint Georges Pompidou nowadays, is rather tricky. In this way, metaphoric noise of the city New York, in this case, seems to be somewhat like a present-day oracle, and New York itself becomes an oracle on its own. So no one but the asker himself is responsible for what he or she will hear and get by taking a step into the installation and starting communicating with the oracle in the form of a dialogue, just like it was in ancient times. I would like to start a story about the next project with an excerpt from Billy Kluver's declaration. One of the most persistent ideas in 20th century art is that of absorbing new technology into art. The futurists' blind devotion to technology, 
the Russian constructivists attempts to merge art and life into new imaginative forms, the more rigorous design approaches at the Bauhaus and the work of individual artists such as Marcel Duchamp and John Cage. This involvement with technology has represented artists' positive desire to be engaged in the physical and social environment around them. That's what the author says about her artwork. The Aphrodite project, which I began in 2000, took me to Cyprus to explore the cult of Aphrodite in both antiquity and present-day contexts. Early on during my research, I discovered that in addition to Aphrodite's well-known association with the control of human love, she was worshipped by both men and women due to her influence over nature, fertility, seafaring and civic harmony, as well as raw sexuality. Aphrodite's temples were spread all across the ancient world, and her priestesses would often perform sexual acts in homage to her, and as a sacrifice for the fertility of the land and its people. As long as Aphrodite's power was broad in scope, the prostitution of her priestesses was intrinsically tied to religion, ritual and public policy. It was seen as a social service and legitimate commerce. It was practiced openly at places of worship and was taxed and legislated, making prostitutes a vital part of city life. All prostitution fell under the domain of Aphrodite, whether the workers were priestesses, high-end escorts or common street workers. There are numerous references that describe the prostitute priestesses and heteras, courtesans of antiquity, as beautiful women bedecked in fine clothes and jewels. Other sex workers would lure men with their flutes or simply walk the dusty streets. One of the most compelling descriptions of prostitutes in antiquity is of their sandals, which would leave footprints with follow me written in the earth. All these researches eventually led to a series of new media artworks called the Aphrodite Project. Platforms is a recent piece of the project. It's a pair of sandals, or platforms as they are called in contemporary language, which is an homage to Aphrodite's cult and her priestesses, and in the same time serves as a pragmatic accessory for modern sex acolytes. With an integrated online component, these platforms are made to provide modern prostitutes with practical assistance within their hard and dangerous professional activities. The 6-inch high platform may look like usual silver leather sandals, but in reality it's an internet-connected computer with built-in advanced transmission and video technology, protecting workers of this marginal profession in hazardous and emergency situations. We are all familiar with legends and myths of ancient Greece since the childhood, but the older we get and the more we learn cultural history, the clearer we see how deep ancient art and culture penetrates our life without losing any bit of its actuality. I'm not going to speak about ways this influence got evolved and transformed over the ages. It's obvious that no art movement, including the most unconventional trends such as sound sculptures and hacker art, could avoid the influence of antiquity.